Hi, and welcome to the Jewelry Classroom. I'm Janet Alexander, and today I'm going to talk about the air acetylene torch. This uses just one tank of acetylene, and it pulls the air through the torch from these holes here. The acetylene air tank consists of the tank, the valve, the pressure gauge, the stem, and the hose attachment. The stem comes out of the tank right here. You turn the torch on with this knob and then you go into the pressure valve here and you come out to the hose. Here I have a Y connection so I can run two hoses. I use this key to insert on the stem and I turn it to counterclockwise opening it all the way. Adjusting this knob just how much pressure is to the to the torch handle. This tells me how much is in my tank. In the acetylene air torch, the acetylene comes up through the handle, it pulls the oxygen from the air, it mixes it in this tube, and then it gives you a nice clean flame. To turn the torch on, just turn this one knob to the left. This is my other torch, which is also an acetylene air torch. It pulls the air in from this area here and it also has just one knob. With this torch I have four different tips from very tiny to fairly large and then the medium. The tips are easily changed by turning this a little bit and then unscrewing the tip this way. Occasionally you want to uh, look at the threads on these tips and keep them clean with a brush. They get corroded at times and they can leak gas. So you just take a metal brush like this and clean, this, clean the threads. I'd like to make one other safety point about cleaning these tips. Never ever use any type of oil on any torch. Oil and torches can be explosive. Always just use a dry clean metal brush to clean it and clean the tip. Now that I've cleaned my threads, I'm going to reinsert this. It goes in like so, and you can twist it to tighten it up, and then tighten it up. You want it facing the correct way, so I'm going to face it down and finish tightening it up with this nut screw here. One thing you want to do about your maintenance on your torch is to always check your hoses. They tend to dry out over time. This one's getting fairly old and it's starting to crack, so I need to uh, replace this hose. The uh, tip on the Smith torch can be removed by undoing this bolt here and then unscrewing it, just like so. And again, you can put it back together the same way. I want to talk a little bit about safety. I have my torch set up on this annealing pan so that my countertop cannot get burned. I have my hair, which is long, tied back in a ponytail so it won't catch fire and I have no sleeves on to catch fire. Additionally, there's nothing over here in the way that will catch fire too. The window cord's away. I've got these fire blocks here to block any fire from going onto my countertop. I'd like to point out another safety problem when lighting a torch. Never ever use a small, big, handheld cigarette lighter as when you light the torch, it could hit that butane in your hand and blow up your hand. I have two ways that I can light my torch. I have a striker here where you hold your hand underneath the striker and you pull and it creates a spark. My other way is electronic lighter. The electronic lighter has a switch right here that when it's pressed it creates a very small spark from a spark plug which lights the flame. The electronic lighter works when you press the nozzle down here, it puts out a little spark to ignite the, fl the flame. Like so. I'd now like to show you how to start your torch using a striker. You're going to place the tip of your torch into this area here, turn on your gas, your gas gets trapped in that area, and you create a spark, just like this. 
Once you're finished using your torch for the day, be sure to turn it off, otherwise you'll lose all your gas. Turn your torch off by turning your key clockwise until it stops. Drain your gas from the line by opening your torch. Make sure this is at zero and then close your torch. The time has come and you're out of acetylene. It's time to get a new bottle. The first thing you want to do is make sure you've turned off your gas. I'm going to take my key, put it on the stem, and make sure it's closed, and it is. Now I can take a wrench and undo this nut. I'm going to take a wrench and I'm going to put it on this nut and hold the bottle tightly and pull downward, releasing that nut and unscrewing it. I continue to unscrewing it and now my bottle is ready to take to the, to the welding supply. I've just undone my gauge and my pressure cap valve from my tank and I want to check this fitting to see if it's corroded. It has a little bit. So again I'm going to take a metal brush and clean it. When you get a new tank from the welding supply it should have a cap on this valve and you just pull that cap off and then it's ready to go. Um, sometimes you want, want to open it a little bit and blow it out by blowing it out, it removes any debris that might be stuck in there. Now it's ready to have my valve put back on. And again, I'm just going to attach the valve and screw this back in. After hand tightening this screw, or this nut, take your pliers or your, your wrench and give it a good tight fit. After tightening this with your wrench, you want to check for any leaks. So turn your valve on, facing away from you, so if anything goes wrong, this won't come out at your face. The next thing I want to do is check for any leaks. I have a bottle of soapy water here, and I'm just going to spritz that on to look for any kind of air bubbles. If there's any leaks, it'll start blowing up a bubble. If there's any leaks, it'll blow a bubble, and if there's a leak here, this nut can be tightened down. But you can always take the tank back to the gas welding place and get a new tank. Okay, right there I have some gas leaking where I've tightened the nut, and I've loosened it back up so I could show you what a gas leak would look like with the bub bubbles. Right here. One last thing I want to talk about is how to store your bottle. Uh, here I've got it tied to the bench on the uh, with bungee cord. That sometimes that is uh, required by your city code.